globally, uh, Condé Nast is having a fantastic year. Um, a fantastic year. It's a very high margin um, profitable business. Um, we do 128 magazines now and 100 websites. And it's been growing at an incredible speed. Our Indian company, with its four magazines, as it will shortly have, is fully profitable um, in its um, fifth year of, of um, okay. operations. Um, and Vogue, in its fifth year, is clearly the market leader of the fashion magazines. I don't think anyone would dispute that. Uh, in India, there's no decline at all. I feel that it's just starting in India. And the amazing circulations that really all your newspapers have is incredible. And the magazine business, I think, can double and triple in size. I reckon it will. Why should it not, with more and more people you know, it's, it's a country that's developing so fast and more and more people will feel that the worlds of GQ and Traveller and Vogue, etc. mean something to them, which is one of the reasons that, we, we, that we've made India a central country for Condé Nast to come into. We're looking at Wired, which is one of our brands which we think would work very well here. We haven't fully decided whether to do it. The three-day controversy when I think Indian Vogue had photographed handbags in a village outside of Jodhpur. Um, of course it was, a, it was in a way rather an interesting modern firestorm in that the issue had been out for four weeks before anybody gave any negative reaction at all. And in fact, it was seen by an American journalist, I think, who worked for the New York Times. And, it, and they saw it in that way. I think they felt it was patronizing that these handbags should be being shown in a, in a rural village. But this was not something that had occurred to the editors of the magazine or to the people appearing in the shoot uh, who had enjoyed the experience of being in it, nor had anybody in this country or indeed anywhere else objected to it. But this one person in America felt very strongly about it, and I think it, they had a legitimate point of view. I didn't agree with that point of view, but they clearly held that point of view. Um, we live in a world now with blogs and Twitter and uh, this huge need people have to stir up controversies, to, in a way to feed the great media machine. I think sometimes people exaggerate how they feel on matters.